This is the Xtool D1 Pro 20 watt diode laser. And in this video, I'm gonna use it to turn this into this and turn this into this. Afterwards, I'll discuss the things I like, the things I don't like, and whether or not I suggest buying this laser if you're in the market for one. First, let's get this thing put together. Quick note on the unboxing process, everything was packed neatly, securely, and all the parts were easily accessible. I was pleasantly surprised to say the least. The assembly process was smooth. The printed instructions that come with the package are good, however, I highly suggest pairing it with the instructional video that Xtool has on their website. Especially if this is your first time assembling a diode laser. Certain parts, like adjusting the belt tension, might be a little confusing at first, and it's good to see a video demo. Honestly, the hardest part for me was plugging the three cables into the board on the underside of the frame. I think the entire process took me about two hours start to finish. That includes taking time to film different angles and working at a leisurely pace. Once I finished assembly, I downloaded and installed Xtool Creative Space, which is Xtool's proprietary software to run the D1 Pro. After that, I opened up Lightburn, my preferred laser software, and added the D1 Pro. I had no issues connecting with either program, which makes me very happy. I ran a quick test just to make sure everything is in working order and the laser is firing. Here's a quick look at my setup and all the accessories I'm using for my test projects today. First, everything is gonna happen inside my Otor enclosure. Enclosures are extremely important for containing the smoke, fumes, and particulate matter that you generate during the laser process. I'm using the Otor enclosure because, well, it's here and I didn't need to buy another one. If you're operating your laser indoors and you value your health, it's a must-have accessory. Xtool has a nice enclosure available on their website you can order along with the D1 Pro. To extract the nasty fumes, I'm using a four inch AC Infinity inline fan that routes outside of my garage door. Under the D1 Pro, I have the X-Tool honeycomb bed. Essential if you're doing any kind of laser cutting work since it allows the proper airflow needed underneath the material. And last but not least, the X-Tool air assist. I'll be only using this for one of the two projects today. For the first project, I'm gonna make some art to hang in my workshop. I've got some stuff going on back here, but the rest of the walls are pretty bare. This is an 11 by 14 piece of picture frame glass with two layers of gloss black paint on one side. I came up with this tattoo art style design that we're gonna display by lasering off the black and then coating it with gold glitter and white paint to finish. I ran this job with the following settings. Speed, 120 millimeters per second. Power, 16%. Overscanning, 2.5%. 400 lines per inch or 400 DPI and air assist off. The 400 DPI was probably a little overkill, but I liked the way it looked during testing. Overall, the job took approximately one hour and seven minutes to complete. Time to wipe off all the excess paint dust. Running the air assist during this engraving process would have probably done this for me. I will definitely try that next time. Now it's time for paint fill. Any color other than black would work. I let everything dry for a day and let's check out the finished result. At this point, I was praying everything went to plan because I hadn't seen the front of the glass since I started this project. I like the way it came out. There are a couple areas of visible scan lines on the body of the mermaid, but that's not the D1 Pro's fault. The LPI I set was probably a little too high for the power settings that I used. For the second project, I'm gonna use the D1 Pro to laser engrave and laser cut a notebook out of some top quality vegetable tan leather. For me, this will be the true test of the D1 Pro since leather is the material I'm most comfortable with. You can't see my face in this clip, but you can tell from my long pause, I just realized I was about to make a mistake. Normally when cutting leather, I'm using my CO2 laser and I prefer to mask the surface with this airbrush tape. This helps reduce the surface scorching, which can be annoying to clean off later. However, the D1 Pro is a blue light laser. Not to get all sciencey, but the blue light lasers don't work especially well with colors like white or clear. I'm sure cranking the power could cut through this no problem, but the real issue would be engraving since the beam is going to be moving a lot faster and at a weaker power. I'm not in the wasting leather business, so I opt to run the file without masking. I'm using the Air Assist module for this project, so let's get it connected. 
I had to route the hose through this opening in the front of the enclosure. If you aren't familiar with what Air Assist does, it's essentially a small air pump that's blowing a constant stream of air directly at our laser beam to move any tiny combustible material out of the way, which reduces flare-ups and keeps the surface clean. Also need to make sure to crank the exhaust fan for this one. Cutting leather smells not great. My settings for this job are as follows. For the engraved design, I'm running 100 millimeters a second, 50% power, no overscanning, 254 lines per inch, and air assist on. For my cut settings, 10 millimeters a second, 100% power, air assist on. For some reason, Lightburn only gave me the estimated runtime of the engraving layer instead of the entire job, but I believe it all took me around 20 minutes to complete. Let's check out the results. I was thoroughly impressed by how clean both the engraving and the cuts came out. I honestly didn't expect it to be so nice. The engraving is deep and precise with very little scorching on the surface around the lines. The same goes for all the cutout stitching holes, the edges, and even the underside of the leather is basically unmarked. I think I said I was only doing two test projects, but I was having too much fun and did some extra credit. Here is a slate coaster I did with a vector graphic engraving. Then I used one of the sample pieces of wood that came with the D1 Pro package to run a quick roster photo engraving. I did no editing to this photo whatsoever, just imported it straight to Lightburn, just to show that even if you're new to lasers, you can hit the ground running. The last test I ran was a photo engraving on an anodized aluminum card. I've done a lot of these little cards on different lasers and I can safely say that I just did my best work ever using this D1 Pro. This was my favorite piece of the whole process. Okay, so let's talk about the things I like, the things I don't like, and whether I would suggest purchasing this machine. First, the things I like. The D1 Pro just worked. I'm someone that operates in a pretty chaotic fashion when I'm testing and prepping for my laser jobs. I start jobs, stop them 15 seconds later, grab the laser head, move it to a new spot, defocus, refocus, run the job again, rinse and repeat until I get the results that I want. And when you work like that, there is nothing worse than your laser losing connection to your software or a job timing out or the laser just getting a mind of its own and not respecting your job origin. The D1 Pro did none of that. I installed Creative Space software, connected over USB and Wi-Fi, and it just worked. I installed the D1 Pro in Lightburn, and it just worked, first time. I've put several days worth of time into this machine outside of the projects you saw here, and it never skipped a beat. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate that because it's often not the case when working with these diode lasers. Number two, the build quality of the parts and the thought that the company put into regarding the presentation. The frame is beefy. The gantry has this metal rail system with these nice metal wheels that are tucked away. The clean minimal design of only having one button visible on the top of the frame. I like that kind of stuff. It's beautiful to look at. It's refreshing to see when the default is usually just a box of metal laser parts thrown together with some crappy print instructions on how to put it together. Now, for some of the things I don't like. Look, there's nothing major, and the first one is actually a beef I have with basically every diode laser. Number one, guys, can we do something about the zip ties? Everything in the box is so nice, then you find yourself having to zip tie power cords to your frame when you're putting it together. I swear we're gonna have a 100 watt diode laser head before we escape the zip tie system. It's nitpicky, but there's got to be a better way. Number two, I'm not a big fan of the thumb screw for focusing the laser head. I found it a little bit cumbersome to deal with when I was focusing and defocusing on my materials. I had a little trouble getting my fingers back there and maneuvering around the top rail, especially when it was inside of the enclosure. I wish it was just a little bit bigger. Number three, again, not an X-Tool specific problem, but I'm not a big fan of the beam shield around the nozzle. I understand why it's there, but if you're focused down on a thin material like the sample plywood, it basically makes the honeycomb magnets useless because the shield doesn't allow enough clearance to move over top of them. I really wanted to use the magnets to hold this piece of wood in place when running the job, but the shield takes up so much space that there was nowhere to put them. I'll probably just take that off in the future. So, would I suggest purchasing the X-Tool D1 Pro 20 watt? Yeah, absolutely. 
I think at this price point with that amount of power, this is an excellent choice, especially if it's your first laser. The 10 watt is fine, but I think as you grow and learn, you'd really kick yourself for not spending the little extra amount to get this 20 watt module, especially if you wanna do a lot of cutting. They offer a 40 watt module, but in my opinion, that's a bit overkill for a diode system. If you can drop that kind of cash, you might as well just save up a little more for the X-Tool P2 and move into the CO2 laser world. The 20 watt is just a great overall sweet spot for a diode laser. Also, an added bonus of buying arguably the most popular diode laser engraver on the market is you have tons of help available at your fingertips. Outside of the official customer support channels, there are tons of Facebook groups, forums, and YouTube videos all dedicated to using the D1 and D1 Pro. If you run into a problem with your machine, you probably aren't the first person and the answer is most likely already out there. So in conclusion, if you're looking to buy what I consider to be the new industry standard 20 watt diode laser, you certainly won't go wrong with the X-Tool D1 Pro. If you're sitting there with credit card in hand, I would greatly appreciate if you could just use the link in the video description below. It doesn't cost you anything, but will kick back a few bucks to me, which helps me pay for everything I've got going on here and make more videos. This laser stuff is not cheap. Thank you for watching.